evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of At My Desk. I am your host, Dr. William Lester. Today's program is brought to you by the American Institute of Metaphysics, www.instituteofmetaphysics.com, and also brought to you by GameCon Radio at www.gameconradio.com. Tonight I want to talk to you about the subject of cryptozoology. Now some of you will go, what on earth is cryptozoology? Well, it comes from the Greek word cryptos, which means hidden. And of course zoology refers to the study of animals. Therefore cryptozoology is the study of hidden animals. Now what animals are hidden, right? We've got Animal Planet, we've got the Nature program on PBS and Nova and God knows what else. Uh, we've seen you know almost all of these animals but the but the fact is uh, many many animals new animal species are discovered all the time new species of bird fish mammal reptile insect are discovered all the time and then there are other animals who in past centuries like the lowland gorilla or the giant panda were believed to be mythological until of course they were discovered discovered and cataloged by by western science one of the creatures uh, in cryptozoology that is always a focal point of, of research and debate is Sasquatch or Bigfoot now I want to keep this conversation uh, above the the typical media soundbite style hoopla uh, that that can that can accompany uh, this kind of conversation by people who are not really serious minded. Okay, and to start off uh, uh, my dialogue, uh, my commentary about uh, Bigfoot, uh, I want to give you uh, a little small set or a little short list of what I consider to be indisputable facts uh, about this question and uh, you know just kind of take that and, and digest it and process it and you know I want you to think about it this is not something I want you to buy into uh, right off nor is it something that I want you to just dismiss and write off uh, uh, out of hand so fact number one for more than 400 years, people have been reporting this large, hair-covered, man-type animal in the wilderness areas of North America, which includes, of course, the United States and Canada. Uh, fact, uh, these sightings are occurring in the present time. This is not just some relic or some kind of folklore uh, of past centuries. These sightings are occurring right now in 2011. These sightings are being made by people of, of unimpeachable character, people who have uh, a high standing in their respective communities, and I'm talking about teachers and policemen and doctors and, and people who we usually look to or, 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 or give credibility to or, or lend some level of respectability to. Another fact, for about 70 years now people have been finding, photographing, and casting these very large human shaped tracks. Now most of these are discovered you know purely by chance there are some trackers out there who are looking but most of these are purely uh, found coincidental in very remote areas uh, and again these tracks are being found today alright. Uh, another fact uh, the cultural histories of, of Native Americans or First Nation people uh, include stories of this creature uh, the term Sasquatch is a Native American term which is translated which translates uh, roughly as the big man of the forest okay and the descriptions in the Native American stories are identical to the eyewitness uh, testimony of those who have uh, seen Bigfoot uh, so these are just a little short list of what I think are, are, are factual uh, elements of, of the Bigfoot uh, story now, what is Bigfoot? Because there are all kinds of theories out there. 
and they range from uh, the scientifically sensible uh, to the uh, comic book absurd. Let's see if we can get old pipe lit up tonight. The theory that I am most fond of is a theory that is based on what we already know exists in the fossil record. There is a creature in the fossil record that matches, I feel, exactly what Bigfoot is. And the reason I say that is because uh, by comparing what's in the fossil record with the eyewitness testimony, uh, I find it difficult to see that it could be anything else. There is a creature in the fossil record called Gigantopithecus, which was a prehistoric bipedal ape type creature. And uh, by bipedal, of course, I meant it, it walked up on two legs like a man, not like a, a chimpanzee or a gorilla, which would tend to put its, its hands or its knuckles down uh, on the ground. Uh, the Gigantopithecus could be seven, eight, ten feet tall. Five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds. I think the largest specimen they have uh, on record is twelve hundred pounds. You could imagine that was a, a, a sizable, sizable animal. Now, you know, you will see stories about, you know, uh, Bigfoot, uh, uh, you know, coming down out of a UFO and uh, going up into a UFO and doing all this. I saw Bigfoot with Elvis. All of that, and that's that. That's that tabloid soundbite type of conversation that I think really is detrimental to having an intellectual conversation about this mystery. Because like I said, I think that when we, when we do a side-by-side -side comparison with the eyewitness accounts, which we have a long history of, like I said, uh, going back 400 years, and of course even before that, before there were any Europeans on this continent, the Native Americans, uh, we have this this very long timetable of descriptions and sightings and accounts of this creature. I think when you compare that with the with the fossil remains of the Gigantopithecus, I I I think you have your answer. Uh, I've heard theories about it being something like a Neanderthal or some other kind of form of primitive man. But again, I think the anatomy and physiology and and the, and the fossil records of this creature kind of preclude that possibility. There are the wild man stories out there and I think if there's anything to those that that's another phenomena enti entirely uh, because these are, are always described as kind of caveman type beings uh, as, as you might visualize a, a, a typical caveman. Uh, so I, I don't think that's what Bigfoot is. Uh, by the way, you can Google Gigantopithecus and take a look at some of the fossil reconstructions so you can see what this creature would have looked like. Mainstream scientists believe that Gigantopithecus went extinct about 300,000 years ago. But again, we have case after case of animal species that we thought were extinct. And we found them, you know, we found living examples uh, uh, existing in the world. The obvious example is the coelocanth, which is the, the fish that we thought was extinct, and, and I think it was caught off the coast of Africa in the 1930s. And of course now we know that the coelocanth is alive and well uh, uh, and is thriving. Uh, so uh, the idea that an animal uh, is, is, uh, has survived what we thought uh, was an extinction level event or, uh, or, or we thought was gone uh, can certainly still be here uh, and, and, and bear this in mind if this creature is a Gigantopithecus it's a hominid it is an, uh, an ape like creature uh, it's going to be a creature that is highly intelligent and if it exists in small enough numbers it has undoubtedly learned very effectively how to stay out of sight, how to stay out of our way and only be seen occasionally and, and quite frankly by accident. I think a lot of these sightings are accidental encounters. So 
an interesting topic, uh, no doubt. Google Gigantopithecus, read up on Sasquatch, stay away from the tabloid stuff, uh, and make your own enlightened decision. So, I'm Dr. William Lester, and I want to thank you very much for joining me here at my desk.